Welcome to a new episode of my Linux driver tutorial. Today I will show you how to use the port callback in a Linux kernel module. And for this I came up with the following setup. Here is my Raspberry Pi 3 and I have connected a button to a free GPIO. And now I want to write a kernel module which will initialize this GPIO for an interrupt and it will also offer or register a device number. Then with a user space application I can open the corresponding device file and use the poll function to be notified whenever I press this button here. So the kernel module will need to do the following tasks. First it has to um, it has to register the GPIO and setting up the interrupt. Then it has to register the device number and offering a poll callback. And then finally in the interrupt service routine we can wake up the poll and that's about it. And because it's a little bit much for one video I've already prepared something. So here I am on my Raspberry Pi and I'm in my Linux driver tutorials folder and you can see here I have added a folder called 16 Paul and here I have already prepared some um, software. In case you don't know how the Paul function works from user space, I've already made a video about it. I will put the link into the description. So here in my Paul folder I have three files. The first one, GPO IRQ Paul.c is the source code for my Linux kernel module. Here we have a makefile for my Linux kernel module and the test app.c is an example user space test app which I will use for testing the kernel module. So let's take a look at the kernel module itself. So it, it, it really isn't very much I have here. So here is our interrupt service routine which will just print a string to the kernel slog. Here I have an almost empty file operation struct. Down here I have my init function for the kernel module which will set up the GPIO and then requesting the interrupt and last but not least register the device number. And of course everything I have registered before I have to clear in the exit module here in the uninitialized module here. So here I am freeing the GPIO, the interrupt and the device number. So let's add the code we will need here. First I will add some new global variables. So static um, int irq ready will be a variable we will be using for indicating if the irq occurred or not. And then I need an object from the type wait q hat t because I will need a wait q for wake up my poll function and maybe later I will make a whole video about how wait queues work and how you can use wait queues and I forgot a very important thing I have I forgot to include some modules so for the poll callback we need to include poll.h and for the wait queue we have to include linux slash wait.h okay so now this works so the next thing here I will do is I will add the poll callback. Poll callback to allow user space add to poll for button being pressed. Okay. And the functions from the type static unsigned int. Okay, and I misspelled unsigned. Yep. And I will call the callback function my poll. It needs the following arguments. First, variable from the struct file, and I will call it file. And the next argument is from the type poll table, and I will call it wait here. Okay. And here in the poll thing, we have to call the function poll wait file wait queue wait and what this function does is it waits for the wait queue to become ready and the cool thing about the wait queue is if we are using a wait queue this process isn't 
So it won't take any CPU calculation time here because the process is liter literally sleeping while it executes this poll wait function here. And this is good. And if we ex if this we leave this poll wait, we will check if our IRQ ready variable is equal to one, because if so, the interrupt occurred. And we will set the variable back to zero and we will return poll in because I will abuse poll. Also, normally you use poll in to wait for data to become ready to read without blocking. But in this case, I will use the poll in for yeah, waiting for the button to become ready, but never mind. And in case the poll wait exited because of another reason, I will just return zero here. Okay, and if we're using a wait queue, we of course have to initialize it. So I will do it with just up right here. Init wait queue. And for this, I will need the function init wait queue hat. And I have to paste my wait queue, a pointer to my wait queue here. Okay, and here in the file operations, I have to override the poll callback with my poll. Okay, so now the last thing we have to do is here in the interrupt service routine, I will set the RQ ready to one and with the wake up function, which will take our wait queue pointer as an argument, I will wake up this poll wait function down here. So when I press the button here, poll wait should exit. And for example, if I pass um, a specific time, so a maximum time it will wait for this function to quit earlier and just in case the RQ ready is not one, then we'll just return zero and we know nothing happened. Okay. Okay, so, so much for the kernel modules. So let me try to compile it. This will take a few seconds. Yeah, it looks good. And now we'll try to load the module. Okay, now the module is loaded. Then the next thing we need is we need, uh, we have already registered a device number, but we don't have a device file yet. And I will use make note to create it. I will call it dev um, irq poll. Yeah. And it should be a character device, major device number 64, minor device number zero. And now we can add the test application. So what I'm already doing here is I'm opening the device file and then here we have to add our poll. So we need to include poll.h here. Then we will need a struct from the type pollfd, I will call my poll. So down here let me clear the whole struct with zeros. Zero size of my poll. Then I will set my poll the file descriptor to um, just open device file and events. I will set the events to poll in because that's the event I'm interested in. And now here I can call my poll function. I have to pass my poll. I have just one item in this list here and I want to wait forever. Or I will wait until the button is finally pressed. Okay, and because of this timeout, we have to ask if the IRQ was ready because if I would set a time here like 100 milliseconds, um, the function should return zero if in 100 milliseconds nothing happened. But I will wait here forever, so never mind. Okay, so now I will try to compile this program. And let's run it. out. Okay, so now it's waiting for the signal. And if I press this button now, yeah, it will return button was pressed. And if we look in the kernel's log, yo, it works. And a little 
strange thing is because I haven't debounced the button here and it occurs two times if I now execute um, this again. No, okay, it works because sometimes if the button was has two rising or falling edges here, the program here will quit immediately, but it seems to work. Yeah, great. Okay, cool. So that's how to use the poll callback in Linux kernel module. I hope you've learned something and enjoyed the video. If you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash Johannes for Linux. I would appreciate it. So thanks for watching and I hope I will see you in my next video.